Hey everybody, this is Brian here. I'm awake, are you? Uh, if you're watching this channel, you're definitely awake. Who's awake? Those are looking at the times that we live in, the signs and the sun, the moon and the stars, the signs on this planet. The signs are everywhere. What are these signs are for and what are they pointing to? They're pointing to one thing and one thing only. A pre-tribulation rapture is about to happen. We know this because the tribulation is about to start because of these signs I just spoke about. And the rapture happens before that time. And that time of the rapture, the pre-trib rapture is here amongst us any moment. We are the generation that will see this. When will it happen? I don't know. I would never give a date or a time, uh, but I can tell you by the signs that we see every day in the news and around the world in our own neighborhoods, that the day is almost here for the rapture. And if you don't know Jesus in your heart, I ask you right now to ask him in your heart to be saved because if you are, are not saved and the rapture happens, you'll be left behind. And if you die before the rapture or you die after the rapture, you will go to hell for eternal damnation. How do you get saved? You believe that Jesus died, buried, and rose again on the third day. His blood, his sacrifice paid for your sins for all mankind, for all mankind, for one, one sacrifice for all. You believe that, confess with your mouth and believe in your heart, you shall be saved. John 3, 16, for God so loved the, the world that he gave his only begotten son, whoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. He wants you to have eternal life right now. And for those of us who are already saved, who are already born again, that watch these, this channel and other channels, we are looking for and hastening the day that the rapture will be here. How do you hasten the day of the rapture? You get people saved. You talk about what God has done for you in your life as a born again believer. You spread the good news. That's how you hasten the day. And that day's almost here. And there's a lot going on in the world right now. Um, I don't have my iPad with me today, so I'm doing a short video. And um, I should have brought it with me, but uh, old timers forgot. So I might do another podcast later today, go into articles and more things like that. But I want to speak about the rapture. I want to talk about our blessed hope. Hebrews chapter 11 is the faith chapter of the Bible. In that chapter, it goes down a list of people, men and women of God who lived 2,000 years ago and longer. And all the troubles and trials they had. Some conquered kingdoms, shut the uh, uh, mouths of lions and these great tasks for God. Others were destitute, lived in holes in the ground, were sawn in two, is, but with, you know what the scripture says? Of whom the world was not worthy. Why wasn't the world worthy of these people? Because these people were men and women of faith. And they were looking for a kingdom, a city, not built by human hands, but built by God himself that will come down out of heaven. That's what kept them going. That's what motivated them. That's what gave them hope. Today, 2,000 years later, what are, we, what are we looking for? Our blessed hope. We're not just looking for a city, which is the New Jerusalem in Revelation chapter 21 and 22. We're looking for Jesus, our, our Savior, our Lord, to come in the clouds to meet us. And we're going to be changed. This, this mortal body will be changed into a glorified body. It'll be changed into the body that it's uh, supposed to be. We're, we're, we're in this temporary fleshly body with all these things that go wrong with it. But soon... In the moment, in the twinkling of an eye, we'll be changed into glory. How, we, how do we know this? Because we'll be able to look at Jesus face to face in his glorified body and not die. We'll see him as he is because we'll be just like him. We won't have quite the power he's got. Obviously, he's God. But we'll have a glorified body, a new spacesuit that we'll be able to live in the atmosphere of heaven and walk the streets of gold with. Never to... Never to die again, never to get tired again, never to get depressed again, never to go hungry again or tired or these things that hit us every day are gone for good. A lot of you, most of you are, uh, are looking for this day just like I am. But some of you, and I understand this, are very discouraged. If he doesn't come in Rosh Hashanah, if he doesn't come during the feast, he doesn't come this year, for here another year. And, you know, I, some of you, not you guys, but some out there are saying, he doesn't come, I'm done doing this pre-trib rapture stuff. I'm done following him. I'm done. Then what are, you, what are you done with? You're done with God? Is that who you're done with? If he, if he comes, he's going to come when he wants to come. That's his business. 
ours is to look for that coming and hasten the day and to live for him every single day is a gift from God that we're breathing. Why are you alive in the last generation? This is the last generation before the coming of the Lord. And we are, we were picked to live during this time. What a privilege. What a gift. What are we going to do with it? I can't leave my home, Brian. I'm stuck. I, I can't get out. I, I'm too too sick or I'm, I have too many ailments, too many things wrong, or I just don't have the money to drive. Okay. We have internet. We have prayer. Prayer was around before internet. <laughs> we forget about prayer. We don't need a phone to talk to millions of people. We can pray for people all over the world in our families. And God hears our prayers and sends angels out to deliver the message to whoever we ask him to. We are it. Don't give up. We're almost out of here. What does God say in his word? And I don't have my regular Bible with me. This I know some people may not like this, but this is an NIV Bible. But this is all I have on me right now. So I'm going to read this. Uh, 29, Jeremiah 29, 11, very, very famous passage. For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good and not for disaster, to give you a future and a hope. In those days when you pray, I will listen. If you look for me in earnest, you will find me when you seek me. I will be found by you, says the Lord. Plans for what? For depression, plans for despair, plans for fear, plans for just like, uh, I want to end my life because I'm so tired of this life. That's not God. That's not the Holy Spirit speaking to you. That's something else. I know things are tough. I'm not discounting it. Believe me, I know. I really do. But we are so close to that time. All the signs are out there everywhere everywhere are those signs for the unsaved they see the unsaved see these signs these things that are happening in the world and they're like it scares them which it should um they don't understand what it's about we understand because we're, 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 we're spirit-filled born-again believers we know these signs are pointing to the tribulation about to start and the rapture happens before that Jesus said in Luke, when you see these things, they are the beginning. Look up for redemption draws nigh. So when the beginning of these things start to happen, the rapture's right there. It doesn't say when these signs are horrible and terrible and you cannot find a place to have food or shelter, then look up your redemption draws nigh. No, it says when you see the beginning of these signs, look up your redemption draws nigh. Our redemption is drawing nigh and closer and closer every single day. And God sees what's going on down here. He's not oblivious to your problems. He's not oblivious to mine. He's, he hasn't turned his head from us or turned away from us. He hasn't abandoned us. He hasn't done any of that, even though we think so. Because we don't see him physically doesn't mean he's not there. Doesn't mean he doesn't hear you, doesn't see you, doesn't speak to you. He speaks every day. He speak, It says, what about the people who live in the remotest parts of the earth who've never heard the gospel? Heavens declare the, the glory of God. Even creation itself declares there's a God. And if we have to wait until the bride is spotless and blameless, we're never going to get out of here. We're spotless and blameless because of the blood of the Lamb. Period. Not because how we can live, which we should live godly lives. We should do that. When we don't live godly lives, we're just bringing more trouble into our own life. Most of you can say this. Maybe, I you know what, I'll speak for myself. A lot of the things that happened in my life is because I brought them into my life. I did. I have, to, I have to blame myself. But you know who rescues me out of them all? Jesus does. He's going to rescue you out of your problems, out of your trials. And, and until then, he will give you the fortitude and the strength and the courage and whatever you need to go through it. And then eventually he's going to bring you into his heavenly kingdom. Why is he going to do all this? Because he promised he's going to do all this. He said he'd never leave us nor forsake us. He said the world's got troubles, but he said, take heart. I've overcome the world. We are overcomers by whom who lives in us. Not because we will it, because he willed it to live in us. We are at the end of time. 
We are at the end of time as we know it. Things are about to switch drastically. The world's preparing for the tribulation. God's preparing to send his son to get us, to take us up for the wedding feast at any moment. What a drastic different picture. Think about this. Look what's going on in your lives and look what's going on in the world. Do things seem happy and peaceful here in your own life or in the world? There's craziness out there and there's chaos, chaos. Then think just one moment. What do you think is happening in heaven right now? Literally, physically. You think the saints in heaven are all stressed out? You think the saints in heaven are going, man, I hope we don't have another pandemic. You think the saints in heaven are going, man, World War III is about to break out. You think the saints in heaven are worried about their next meal? You think the saints in heaven are worried about locking their doors and their mansions in heaven? You know, you know what the saints are worried about? Nothing. And you know what they're preparing for? You know what your relatives are preparing for right now? Because if we know it's close and we live on this earth with the scriptures and with the signs, don't you know heaven knows what's coming too? Don't you know heaven and the angels and the saints in heaven are as excited? They're saying to each other, it's here. I know it's here. It's coming close. We know it is. Jesus tells us every day it is, but he doesn't know when the Father's going to send him yet, but he's telling us it's soon. It's soon. He's walking around on the streets of gold, announcing through angels and himself, it's soon. It's soon. You're going to see your families very, very soon. That's what's going on in heaven. They are excited to finally come back and not just get a, their, a permanent glorified body, but all these families that have been orphaned over the centuries will finally be together. You're going to meet relatives from centuries ago you didn't even know you had. And you're going to know them like you've known them all your life because you have the mind of Christ. You want to know something? How's the Adam made? You're going to know it. You're going to know it because you have the mind of Christ. That's what's waiting for us. Just another day. Just make it through this day. God's not asking you to get to the end of the week. He's just asking you for right now. What are you going to do for me right now? If it's getting on your knees and praying for a relative, then do it. If it's going to a neighbor that needs groceries, then give them groceries. Whatever it is. If it's just working your job and doing the best job you can, then that's what it is. This is life. I'm talking about life. This is just life here on the planet. Heaven is excited. And we're excited because we're about to meet him. We are about to meet. We're about to meet the person that made everything. You're going to know what color Jesus' eyes are. You're going to know the tone of his voice. You're going to know him by his walk. You know, you know people in your life, you can tell them from a distance by the way they walk. You can hear your child's voice in a crowd of thousands because you know that child. Don't you think he knows us that well? We're going to know him that well. Prepare yourself. Prepare yourself to live every day in heaven because it's coming any moment. I love you guys. I'm looking forward to meeting all of you. And I'll see you in the clouds sooner than later. This is Brian out. Love you guys. Bye-bye.